Hello everyone and welcome to the online open day here at Han University of Applied Sciences. We're super happy to have you here. My name is Olga, I'm the second year university student here at Han. I study communication. Today I'm going to be hosting this live talk show. First of all, uh, let me announce the topic. We are going to be talking about visa and scholarships. And before we start, let's watch a short video about it. Are you coming to study at Han? And are you from outside the EU? As the Dutch say, a good start is half the work. In 84 seconds, we'll tell you how to get off to a good start in the Netherlands. First, you receive an email from the admissions office. It tells you which documents you need to send us for your residence permit and entry visa. It also includes the invoice for the financial guarantee. The financial guarantee has different parts. This is what you pay for the first year of study. You pay the financial guarantee before the 15th of June if you start in September, or before the 15th of November if you start in February. And you gather the necessary documents, email them to the admissions office. Han Immigration takes over your application from here on. And if anything's missing, they'll let you know. Then, everything is sent to the Immigration and Naturalization Service, IND. They assess the application. Sometimes that takes two months, so make sure you send the documents on time. You get a mail from Han Immigration telling you whether your application has been approved. You also receive an approval letter with your V number. Now you can make an appointment with the Dutch Embassy or Consulate in your home country to pick up your entry visa. You don't pick up your residence permit until you're in the Netherlands. Welcome to Han. Then it's time to book your trip. We look forward to seeing you soon in the Netherlands. Just one more thing. Before you depart, we send you some extra info about how you register at a Dutch municipality, how to open a Dutch bank account, and how to arrange a tuberculosis test depending on your country of origin. Also, go to hanuniversity.com slash visa for all the important info. Hopefully, this video gave you some basic information about the topic. And right now, let's talk about the visa information. So, first, let me introduce my guests here on the couch. Magda and Lina, could you tell about who you are and what you're doing here? Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Magda and I work at the Han International Office and I deal, among other things, with visa matters and scholarships. Perfect. And my name is Lina. I'm a first year student of communication and I'm from Russia and I also have received this scholarship. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I want to start with the question, mm -hmm. um, what do students have to do themselves with the visa process and what is done for them? Okay, I think it's good to know that a lot of the things uh, we do for the students, um, but first they need to send us a couple of documents. Mm -hmm. And once they have sent that in, um, they get accepted into the study program and then Han Immigration takes over the visa uh, process. That means that we apply on behalf of the student for their entry visa and residence permit. And we also deal with all communication with the IND Mm -hmm. which is the International Immigration and Naturalization Services here in the Netherlands. Perfect. Yeah. How early would you advise people to start with this whole visa process? I would say as early as possible, um, but we need to have the documents in by um, mid-November if you would like to start in February, mm -hmm. and mid-June if you'd like to start in September. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Um, uh, financial guarantee is mm -hmm. something that's being mentioned a lot with mm -hmm. the first year students. So what is it essentially? Well, financial gu guarantee actually is a package. It covers uh, a number of uh, um, items, among which the tuition fee, but also accommodation and health insurance mm -hmm. and the cost for your visa. So it is a package deal that you pay and then almost everything is taken care of for you for the first year. Perfect. Yeah. Um, now, Lina, I would like to ask you about your experience because you are super fresh, you're first year, you remember everything. Uh, could you explain how the visa process went for you? Yeah, of course. For me, it went uh, quite well and quite easy because, yeah, as Marta said, everything was covered by Han. Uh, so after you have paid your 
um, situation free. He got just a letter from immigration office that uh, uh, now they will be busy with your documents and uh, maybe in two or three weeks you will receive one more letter that yeah now you have an approval from uh, ind and then you can make an appointment at, at embassy in your country and then it's just super easy you go there you uh, bring some documents uh, for example like approval letter from university approval letter from uh, ind uh, also your passport a uh, photo for the passport and uh, um, insurance also and uh, you just uh, provide embassy with the uh, all the documents you have and you wait like two or three weeks and uh, after that you get your visa perfect yes so it was quite uh, um, quite nice and not stressful at all nice and what happens when the student is already here in the netherlands well the actual residence permit is handed out here uh, the ind comes to home campus so you don't need to go anywhere else you can just pick it up here during the first week of the semester. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's super easy indeed. Perfect. Um, what do you need to do and uh, how, yeah, is it necessary to open a Dutch bank account? Yes, I think it is necessary. Um, you can already start looking into the different possibilities in your home country. Um, see if you can already arrange for uh, an appointment to be made here. Um, but it's important to realize that you need to have your BSN number before you can actually go to your bank appointment. Mm -hmm. And the BSN number is a very important number. You will need it for a, a number well, of things here in the <laughs> Netherlands. And you get it upon registration at the municipality where you're going to live. Mm -hmm. And we as Hans may have made special arrangements with the municipality in both Nijmegen and Arnhem. Um, that they will open up um, designated time slots for the international students at the beginning of the semester to go there and have their uh, registrations done. So and they will not need to walk... stand in line? <laughs> no, they don't need to stand in line and they walk away with their BSN number in hand so they can, for instance, go on to their bank appointments right away. Perfect. I also would say that uh, having a bank account in the Netherlands is quite essential because, for example, our Russian bank cards, they are not acceptable in supermarkets. So, True. yeah, yeah. Uh, first month when I yeah, was waiting for my uh, bank cards, I just had to pay in cash. And yeah, that's the thing why you really need this. Definitely. Yeah, MasterCard and Visa cards are not accepted in certain places in the Netherlands. Like, well, in Amsterdam, I'd say that there are more places yeah, it where works, it's accepted yes. <laughs> because it's a tourist city, pretty much. Yeah, but if you really go in the Netherlands, yeah, you might have <laughs> some issues. So, yeah, if you're already here, if you have some free time, please go and open the Dutch bank account. Uh, yeah, Lina, I wanted to ask you about uh, this process of uh, coming to the Netherlands mm -hmm. and arranging all the documents. Was that difficult for you? Um, no, I wouldn't say so because, yeah, as we mentioned before, everything was uh, ready. Um, and uh, also I would say that I have arrived quite early. Uh, my academic year started in September, the 1st of sept September, but I was in the Netherlands on the 3rd of August. Yeah, so I had just uh, a month for myself just to yeah, adjust to the country and uh, to uh, find everything I wanted to do, like all the documents, appointments. But also that can be a problem because I had to wait for um, everything to be arranged. Like uh, BSN number, I had to wait like for three weeks and only in the end of August I could finally get it. Yeah, yeah. because I arrived too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it was nice also. I still had visa and I still could uh, be here. Um, yeah, and uh, as Marta said, visa number is really, really important. And only uh, having that one, you can open, finally open your bank account. True. Yeah, that's why for uh, students, usually it takes like a week. You just uh, bring your visa number and passport and then you open your bank account. So it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, I know that many students have questions uh, regarding the later process after their education, mm -hmm. like how to find a job and everything. Okay. And I know that there is the orientation year after your study yes. process. So yeah. what is that about? The orientation year is all about uh, after your graduation. Um, it is an, a year that you can stay on here in the Netherlands. Uh, you can apply for a special um, search year visa. And then you have um, one year to look around to see if you can find a job or what you would like to do here in the Netherlands. So it's just an extra service that the IND offers you after your graduation. Perfect. Okay, then I'd say let's move on to the scholarships. 
Um, yeah. So regarding scholarships, Magda mm -hmm. has some information about that. So, yes, yeah. I do. Um, we offer uh, the Han Holland Scholarship, and I think we have a slide that we can show yeah, now to. Yes, for the Han Holland Scholarship, it is uh, it applies to both bachelors and masters with a non-European nationality, and um, um, you can apply for it if you have not previously been enrolled in a degree program in a university in the Netherlands. But also, you need to be accepted into a full-time. English taught program here at home, and your IELTS score needs to be at least 6.5 or an equivalent. And if you are eligible for the scholarship, then you will receive an email inviting you to apply for this scholarship. Mm -hmm. And then, then there you need to apply for it. You need to do a couple of things. Um, maybe you can explain yeah, what course. you need to do because yeah. you did the process. Yeah, of course I did. Uh, when uh, application period for scholarship is opened, uh, you can start your application and for that you need to prepare a resume, uh, a motivation letter and a short video statement about yourself, about the program, about your motivation and uh, yeah, also to fill in the application form. So you will have about a month for that. Uh, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, this uh, usually takes place in uh, April. So, for example, for me, it was like the, on the 1st of April, I got the mail that now you can apply for the scholarship. And then I had a month to complete my application. So it's like a pretty lot of time to do that. And uh, yeah, you have uh, everything. You have all possibilities to complete it in time. Um, yeah, uh, what about other scholarships? Are there any other ones? Yes, because um, um, if you do apply for the Han Holland Scholarship and you, for some reason you don't get it, because not all students that apply will get it, um, there's like a 30% chance that you will be awarded the Han Holland Scholarship. But if you do not get it uh, awarded, then there's the Honors Scholarship and you can apply for it in your second year, but you need to be, um, it's not actually that you can apply for it, but you will be selected based on your academic results. Mm -hmm. So if you are an excellent student, then your study program can decide to award you the honors scholarship. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. That's actually the scholarship that I have. Uh, so we have like a perfect opportunity here to talk <laughs> about all scholarships because um, Elena has got the Han Holland scholarship mm -hmm. and I have Han honors scholarship. And um, yeah, I'd say the main difference is that for a Han Holland scholarship, you apply before you come here. And um, honors is the one that you just don't really do anything for. <laughs> you just have to Except study well. Hard. Yeah. That's <laughs> about it. And then uh, if your GPA is high enough, they will select you and you will get a very happy email. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Lina, can you maybe tell some tips or tricks about uh, making those creative things for a scholarship? Of course. Um, f as I mentioned, we have to write a motivation letter, we have to write a resume, and also we have to create a video. And uh, as a communication student, I do recommend you to do a creative video because, uh, yeah, it is nice to film something just uh, using the wall and your camera or laptop or something. But also, you can make a story from your video and uh, it would be nice if all your documents from application would, uh, yeah, would have something to add to each other. So in general, you can create a story, uh, your own profile, uh, using all the materials that you can use. Uh, do not uh, try to repeat <laughs> uh, words from motivation letter in video. Do not try to put them also in CV because it will be the same information. Mm -hmm. But you need to tell something new, you need to, to tell something interesting about yourself, about your personality. And then it can be like a really strong motivation and a strong profile for the scholarship. Uh, what else? Uh, also, I would say that uh, Try to put as much as uh, possible strong word, uh, words um, in your CV mm -hmm. and uh, mention everything that you were doing. For example, your education, your courses, uh, work experience if you have, uh, uh, volunteering, uh, achievements, uh, interests. All of these can create a clear image of uh, what are your person you are and uh, what can you do about it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that it was important for the, um, yeah, for people who are busy with scholarships to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we are going to have some students in our university, and what kind of students they are. Mm -hmm. True. 
Yeah. Okay, and uh, now more technical questions mm -hmm. about scholarships that people might have. Uh, when are you considered eligible for a scholarship for Han Holland? For the Han Holland scholarship, you need to have a nationality outside of the European Union. You need to be accepted into a full-time English taught program here at Han. Mm -hmm. You cannot have been enrolled before at any different, at a different university here in the Netherlands. And you need to have an IELTS score of at least 6.5. And then you are eligible, and then you will be invited to apply. Perfect. Yeah. And it's quite a, a substantial amount, that yeah. the, the Han Holland Scholarship. For bachelors, it is 12,500 euros. Mm. Yeah, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's quite a lot. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And when will the student be invited to take part in this selection process? They will be invited around April 1st for mm -hmm. the September intake. Um, and then they have a month to apply mm -hmm. because your application yeah. needs to be in by May 1st. And then we try to um, finish the selection procedure in three weeks. So mm -hmm. they would have a notification around the 20th of May. Mm, that's pretty, pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, it's hard work. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, talking about scholarships, I can imagine that a lot of people have questions regarding um, the procedure, how long it takes and everything. But as we already talked about it, it's pretty easy. And if you put enough effort in to the um, uh, things you submit, the video, the CV, motivation letter, you will have a great chance to get a scholarship. So if you really want to, please do so and uh, put enough time in that. So don't start like two days before the deadline. That will not be a good idea. Yeah, but even if you don't make it for Han uh, Holland scholarship, you still have a chance to get something Han Honor scholarship. So yeah, explore your options. And if you have any questions, I'm sure that the Han yeah, department answer. can answer your questions if yes. you send them an email. Yeah. And there are diff um, additional uh, opportunities for scholarships out there. So, True. yeah, I mean, you cannot combine the two home scholarships, but you can combine it with an, a different scholarship. So True. it might be uh, worthwhile to find out. Definitely. Yeah. OK, uh, now let's maybe move on to the Q&A, because I can imagine mm -hmm. that a lot of you guys have questions in the chat. I can already see some. Mm -hmm. So the first one is about the visa. Mm -hmm. Does the visa cover the full four years? Uh, yes, it does. It does. It covers the entire period of your study here at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Um, hmm. That is, if you are going to do a bachelor degree for a master, it also covers the entire duration of your study here, but that's shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next question. What are you looking for in scholarship applicants? How does the hand make the decision? Um, we look for... Um, Excellent all-round students, like Lina already pointed out. It's not just about academic uh, excellence, but also um, what kind of person you are. And if you have an eye for your surroundings, like yeah. doing volunteering work or being a board member of some, um, some organization, that also is interesting. Um, yeah, so that is what, what we look for. True. Yeah. Okay. What's the recommended time to arrive in the Netherlands for the September start? Not in the beginning of August. <laughs> well, I think it's wise to arrive a little bit earlier if you have the opportunities. So you can, yeah. you know, in the uh, middle of August would be nice. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. that would be perfect because then you have some time to adjust and to uh, get over it. maybe a jet lag that you might have True. and already walk around yeah. your neighborhood and find out where supermarkets are and post offices and whatever you need. Uh, maybe already um, step inside mm -hmm. of Han. Uh, and then, of course, we have our orientation at the end of August. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be good to have everyone in by then. True. It's a very, very important one, I'd say. Yeah, uh, Lina, you had the introduction yeah, course, right? Yes. Yeah, we both had it. And I think that it's very important for the new coming yeah. students because there you will definitely have everything laid out in front of you. The BSN number, the bank account, how to get everything and all the questions will be answered. So if you are worried about that, please arrive in the Netherlands before the introduction week. Okay. Do I apply for the scholarship? How much time it takes to be informed about the result? Three weeks it takes, yeah. So yeah. you can complete the application till uh, the 1st of May. And then, for example, I got my happy mail on the 20th <laughs> of May. So literally uh, three weeks. Yeah. yeah. 
So you would advise people to apply for a scholarship? Of course, right? yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a nice opportunity, also it's a nice uh, phrase to put in your CV that, yeah, I'm honored of uh, having a scholarship also. Uh, it is co quite a big amount of money because for non-European students it's quite expensive and uh, to get uh, some money would be nice. Definitely, yeah. Okay. Waiting for another question. Can you combine scholarships? You can combine scholarships, but not the two Han scholarships. So you cannot have the Han Holland scholarship and then also uh, have the honors. Mm -hmm. So it's either or, but you can combine them with other scholarships outside of Han. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, if you have any other questions, you still have an opportunity to ask us them. I'll just type them in the chat and uh, we will receive them here on the tablet. Okay, meanwhile, I wanted to ask you, Lina, to maybe share some of your experiences now here in the Netherlands. How was it for you so far? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, it was... Um Actually, the Netherlands was uh, always the dream for me because my mother is a teacher of Dutch language in uh, uh, Russia. Uh, so I have been visiting the Netherlands from the age of nine, every year, maybe twice a year. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of visiting. And also I have a lot of friends because of exchange programs in high school that was also in the Netherlands. So for me, it was quite easy to adjust because I know people I know the language, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I understand the culture, but uh, uh, some friends of mine uh, who also study in Han, they needed more time to adjust uh, for some mm -hmm. Dutch things, for example, to eat uh, bread uh, two times a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> for, yeah, for cheese like every day and uh, these things. But it's also fun for me to explain them how, how it works. Uh, Dutch students, they all, of course do that as well. And I think that they're quite happy to share the culture Definitely. and yeah, to show how everything is uh, working here. So uh, I was quite uh, happy to explain what Sinterklaas is, uh, oh, what Hagslag cool. is. <laughs> so these are uh, quite um, really Dutch things. And yeah, it's, uh, it's fun for me and it's fun for students. Yeah, so um, I wouldn't say that I have like these uh, um, yes, uh, troubles with adaptation, not at all. Also because yeah, I live in Den Bosch, not in Arnhem, and I live with a good friend of my family. Uh, so yeah, even more Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so it was nice. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that it was difficult, not at all. And also because um, um, I read an article and it said that more than 93% of Dutch people, they can speak English, if not fluently, but quite well. So it will be not a problem with language. Definitely not. I can confirm as a person who speaks zero Dutch. Maybe like I can say Danke well. That's like the, the biggest <laughs> achievement of mine, I think. Um, so yeah, you just pick up some yeah easy words like thank you that I just mentioned and stuff like that. But apart from that, uh, or even that, I don't think you need because uh, every single person here, almost every single person speaks English really well. Even if you call for some administrative matters, uh, for example, now with COVID, we were calling uh, the um, health department. You were just listening to a message and then first it speaks with the Dutch language and then straight away in the English. So it's just really easy to get around without knowing Dutch. Okay. Meanwhile, we received another question. Do students need to pay health insurance every year? Yes, you do. Yeah, it's one of the requirements that you have um, sufficient health care yeah. insurance. Yes. Because, uh, for example, there the person mentions that in the first year it is in the financial guarantee. And yes. what do you do after that? You pay, you pay it yourself. Okay. Yeah. So you just kind of continue it? You continue it. Yeah, but you can switch if you want to, but most students just continue. Okay, they are. Yeah. perfect. Uh, do students need to maintain their grades to keep the scholarship? They do. That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. You need to have at least 45 credits. Yeah, 45 every credits. Every year. Yes. To, to, uh, to keep the scholarship. Yeah, that's but true. I would say it's quite easy. Yeah. Yeah, because, okay. uh, you know, for example, I had only one exam period, but yeah, I got all the grades above eight, so it was quite uh, <laughs> doable. So, Definitely. yes. 
Yeah, as long as uh, you go to classes, as long as you participate yeah. and do your homework, it is definitely doable to do that. So don't worry about that. But yeah, keep in mind that you can just like do nothing if you're on the scholarship because then you will lose it. And yeah. I'm sure that you don't want that. So yeah, just. And also, you came here to, to, uh, to study. So of course. study. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you need to learn Dutch while you're studying at Han? You can, because during the uh, second semester you can choose a second language yeah. uh, in the International School of Business at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can choose between Dutch, German, French and Spanish. For example, I choose Dutch because yeah, I think that it's quite helpful to understand the language of a country you are living in and also language is a part of a culture. So mm -hmm. yeah, for me it was important to choose sure. Dutch, yes. Yeah, and also if you're not enrolled in any of the programs in the International School of Business, Han does offer social Dutch courses to all international students. And I think it would be nice if uh, you could at least learn a few words or a few sentences. Also because it makes it easier to talk to people in the supermarket or maybe some elderly neighbors that you have. Yeah. Um, I think it's just an, uh, an asset if you speak some yeah. Dutch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, as we mentioned before, you don't have to learn Dutch, it is can. always yeah. optional. Okay. Even with uh, the courses in um, International School of Business, you have a choice between four languages, so it doesn't have to be Dutch because you're in the Netherlands, you can always choose something else. Okay, another question coming. Ooh, I can already see that it's a different one. What medical services are we entitled to? Dutch doctors? Dutch example? doctors? Yeah, emergency care. Dutch so, doctors. Like yeah, for example, with that um, uh, insurance that is provided with the fin um, financial, financial guarantee. guarantee. Yeah. Yeah, so yes, you can go to any doctors and if something Usually happens students um, take a doctor that's close to where they live mm -hmm. um, and they, uh, they become like patients. Well, not yeah. uh, in that practice, um, and uh, so that's included in the in the financial guarantee in the in the um, health insurance, yes, mm -hmm. and also emergency care, of course, uh, and some things like physiotherapy, yeah. if you if you really need it, and uh, just the basic things are all covered. Yes, perfect. How does the credit system work with education? The credit system. Yep. Oh, I think it's maybe you can explain yeah, that. Um, uh, at least you need to get at least 5.5 for a subject and also every year you can see uh, how many uh, credits you have for what kind of subject. For example, for digital marketing I had, I had uh, five credits, for persuasive communication it was also five credits, for English last period it was uh, 2.5 and if you pass the subject then you get credits. For example, uh, you need to, to get, as I said, uh, pint for, uh, pi, uh, <laughs> 5.5 uh, to uh, get your credits and yeah, that's pretty it how it works. Yeah, so pretty much in a year you can get 60 credits maximum mm -hmm. and to pass the year you need to have 45 credits. Um, yeah, as long as I remember. Yeah. And um, yeah, as Lina mentioned, each subject is different with the amount of credits. So you will see it in uh, your Allure system, that's how it's called. And there you see like all the subjects and your scores and how it is translated into credits and you can control the situation. Um, but yeah, it's very easy to understand. Uh, also for the people from other countries who might have a different scoring system, uh, here the maximum is 10, so uh, for instance 5.5 is, is a passing grade and um, yeah of course the more the better but yeah if you get 5.5 then you pass the exam or portfolio whatever you have so that's how it works. Any other questions? If you have then just type them in, if not then yeah. <laughs> But meanwhile, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the differences uh, between the cultures because uh, Lina and me, we're both from Russia. And uh, yeah, I can understand that you have a more smooth experience considering yeah. that you've been here a lot before and your mom is a teacher of the Dutch language. But did you notice any like, you know, maybe intercultural differences when you went here? Um, I would say that 
of course, we have even a subject, intercultural awareness. And um, I would say that the main thing that you can notice here that Dutch people, they are really direct. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to be ready for that. <laughs> but it's nice because you can clearly understand what they want and what they mean. True. Yeah, yeah they're very straightforward with what they're saying. And sometimes for people, for, for example, from um, Asian countries, it may seem rude because there is no like small talk. They are not going like around the subject, but they are like very <laughs> yeah very direct and if you have to for example talk about a project at school or something like that they will not ask you hey how are you doing how was like your weekend or something they're like okay so we need to do that that and that let's do it so be ready for that and uh don't think of that as something rude because it's not they are very kind actually yeah it's they're just really cute they yeah. were talking yeah so it's pretty normal uh, we have another question. After finishing a bachelor, can we stay in the Netherlands? Because the visa ends after the fourth year. Yeah, um, you can apply for a third year. This is a, uh, it's a special kind of visa. So you can stay on for another year and see if you can find a job here in the Netherlands, if that is of interest to you. So there's a special uh, orientation year visa available, available for that. Yeah, Perfect. so you can stay. Yeah, with that, I think we can round it off. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. I hope that we have answered all your questions and that we have helped you figure out this whole process of applying for a visa and a scholarship and everything else. And yeah, we hope to see you here at Han. Yeah, and thank you to my thank guests. You. Thank you for helping thank you. me. Thank you for hosting. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.